Today we start our modification of the Audi 3D printer with a Flexion extruder. So if you've seen my i3 Mark III Is It Worth It video, you know that I'm pretty happy with this machine. But my most popular video by far is still on the Audi 3D printer, also known as a one how duplicator i3. Well, I'm certainly not gonna waste it, but you might be wondering, what am I gonna do with it? Well, in this video, we're gonna start modifying it by adding reliability, adding features, and moving it towards being a specialist, flexible material printer. Now, when I was planning the modifications for this printer, I found a really handy website. It goes through how to modify the Duplicator i3 first version with a range of different mods. They start from really little things through to really big things. So why not start with some basics? The first thing I decided to do off the list was to print these little x-axis guides to make sure the gantry was completely parallel with the rest of the machine. So here are our two 3D printed pieces and this is how we're going to use them. We're going to place them either side of the printer, not on top of the bed, but on the grey frame. If you put it on top of the bed, the bed might not be even and you're going to throw the whole thing off. After that, we're going to use the touch screen to move it down just above and then disable the motors. Finally, we're going to twist it by hand until we get them seated up nice and tight on both sides. Make sure they're straight and they're not wiggling around to ensure accuracy because after you've done that, you can be absolutely sure that your whole assembly is parallel with the frame of the machine. Now simply lift it up to remove and you're ready to go. Great, that's one small thing fixed, but there was another little thing that was getting on my nerves. In the manual, they recommend that you level the bed before every print, but I find that's pretty annoying. I try to get away for as long as I can without changing it, but because the thumb screws wobble back and forth from the vibration, the printer eventually goes out of whack. There's another simple mod on the list that fixes this problem. These 3D printed thumb wheels have room for a lock nut to go on, which means they should be vibration proof and the bed should hold its position for a lot longer. Now of course step one is to print the thumb wheels and then step two is to remove the old ones. Now this whole thing is useless if you don't use a nylock nut. They have a little bit of plastic on the inside that grips the thread and prevents any wiggle. Pop it in with some pliers and then optional step is to use a sharpie to colour the top which will increase the contrast and show up the markings built into the design. At this stage I would highly recommend tightening the lock nuts against the bottom of the screw to prevent the whole thing from twisting. After that it's a pretty easy job twist them to the left which threads them onto the assembly and then they're ready to go. That is of course apart from leveling the bed which you'll have to do again. So those two mods help the reliability and usability of the printer but let's get more serious. For a while now, probably five years or more, I've had this roll sitting around a Filaflex semi-flexible material. Now I was able to print this stuff reliably on a MakerBot Replicator 1 back in the day at a previous school but I've never owned my own printer at home that was able to do this stuff nicely. Therefore, my plan is to fit a specialist extruder and make my machine a specialist semi-flexible material machine. Now that's not to say that I still don't want to print on it with ABS and PLA and other normal materials. So therefore, I ordered a Flexion extruder, which has an adjustable dial to set the tension of the extruder so you can print a range of different filaments. I ordered mine for $225 from 3D Printer Gear in Australia, and only after it came did I realize that it was meant to be a direct swap for my exact printer. Bonus. Therefore, the Flexion website has a really, really good guide on how to install it step by step with some really detailed photos. I followed that, filming everything so you can follow my progress. Let's get started. Before we can begin to install in the extruder, we first have to disassemble the old one. I recommend lifting up the Z height as high as it can go so you have enough access for your tools. The first two bolts you have to undo at the bottom of the fan. Undoing wheels will not only release the fan but also the extruder from the back and that will come completely loose as soon as you unplug the plug that goes back to the electronics. Next, undo the small grub screw in the mounting block and that'll allow the heater assembly to drop below, hanging on its wires. If you put another Allen key up from underneath, it'll undo the heater block completely, which you can then remove. One nice thing about the Flexion extruder is that it's going to recycle all of our electronics so we don't need to change the firmware. The bolt that holds in the thermistor is obvious enough, but you'll need to poke around a little bit to find the grub screw that tightens the heater block. After you've done that, push it through to release it. Now we can take the stepper motor and take off the old extruder. There's only two bolts holding it on and the mine were pretty tight. Use two hex keys to remove the lever arm and then finally the base, which reveals our final component, which is the filament drive gear. You'll notice here a line of red where it's been digging in and that's the type of thing the Flexion extruder tries to avoid by having the brush. So that's the disassembly complete. Time to get the new Flexion extruder in place. 
The first thing we're going to do is to transplant our two pieces of electronics into the heater block. We'll start with a thermistor and there's a little hole machined in there and then a nice rubber washered screw to hold it in place. Now the heater block did give me some grief. There's a little sleep on the inside which prevented it from fitting, but after I removed that and tightened it up, I found it was too loose. Now this represented my one and only mishap of the entire process. Fortunately, the instructions predicted this and told me that if I cut a strip of aluminium foil, I could wrap it around and use that to make up the extra width that I needed to get a nice snug fit. So that's exactly what I did. I headed to the kitchen, tore off some strip, cleaned it up with the scissors and wrapped it around a bunch of times until I thought it would go in tightly. And it was a really snug fit after that. I pushed it in, it was a little bit hanging out the end, but after I did up the screw to retain it, everything was super snug and super neat. I now turned my attention to assembling the extruder, making sure the plug was to the left like in the factory position. You place this on top, do up the screw, and that will allow it to swivel, but it shouldn't be able to lift up and down. Next we install the cam piece, which goes in the upper right. It has a similar method of install, where you put in a screw and it should be snug but not be able to wobble. Unfortunately, the thread on my stepper motor was already damaged, so it doesn't go on as nicely as I'd like, but I think it's still going to do the job. Finally, we have the extruder drive gear which slides down and you need to make sure you line up the grub screw with the flat part of the shaft of the stepper motor. They really recommend putting through some 1.75mm filament, so that's exactly what I did. Before you tighten up anything, that'll align everything perfectly and that means you can have an accurate assembly that you won't need to pull apart and fix later on. Now I noticed as I pulled the filament it wasn't making the stepper motor rotate, so I tightened up the little adjustment screw to increase its grab on the filament. Time to put it all together. Firstly we feed down the wiring for the heater block and then we put on the new mounting block which is a really really nice piece of gear. We secure it from underneath using the same screws as the last time and we also use the same screws as last time to hold on the fan and the extruder on the top. The only difference is because we're leaving off the heatsink we need two little M3 washers to space it out correctly otherwise it will wobble and ruin all of our accuracy. After this we can slide the heater assembly up from underneath making sure to rotate it and align it so the white tube lines up with the extruder drive gear. Now this little bit looks a little bit tricky but as long as the power's off it'll be fine. You have to put your allen key through the hole in the fan to get to the screw that tightens the heater assembly in place. Now we take the second piece of white tube and we slide it in from the top once again making sure it's aligned. A final step is to find a place for the sticker that tells us the recommended settings for different filaments. Now by this point you might think most of the physical install is done but there's still one more step to go. What you need to do is heat up the printer to 200 degrees, wait till it's all hot and then give it one final tighten to set everything in place after the materials have expanded. The adjustment cam is knurled so you can do it by hand but there's also these little cutouts to make putting in an allen key to rotate it much easier. Fitting in the filament is pretty straightforward, put it in from the top, tell the motor to spin and it should suck it in like you would expect. All the physical installation was done, it was time to do my first print. Now Flexion does have a page on their website that serves as a guide on how to tweak the extruder to get the best performance, but I was pretty happy with the checks that I did as I was assembling it, so I thought I'd be ready for my first print. Well here it is, a 30mm calibration cube, and it looks pretty good too. You can see some patterns on the surface, but I don't think they're ghosting or ringing. Now the stickered sheet on the bed of my printer is starting to give me some grief. For a start it's leaving these nasty white marks on the bottom of my prints. I'm definitely going to address that in a future episode and see if I can get the functionality of the printer a little bit closer to this one. As for printing with flexible material, well I think that's a whole nother can of worms, so I'm going to save that for a future video too. If you've got any further suggestions on how you'd like me to modify this printer, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.